here and welcome to episode four, I think, um, of the season where I am going to be continuing to add the mid-tones, I think, to this painting and see how that goes, <laughs> basically. Um, and this has been a bit of a chaotic, I think, season because I, and very ironic actually, oh, very ironic, um, given <laughs> the, uh, the theme of this episode, but basically I think I've been kind of binging this podcast mostly because I really want to finish this painting um, and I haven't had a lot of time. So I've kind of um, gathered a list of things that I want to talk about throughout the last month um, and now I have them all together and I kind of wanted to do them. I didn't think I was going to do them in one setting, but it's becoming more of a one setting kind of thing. But anyway, the reason I say that this is a, um, a kind of ironic um, behaviour for this podcast um, is that the topic that I wanted to talk about today is binge purging on self-love. And this is something that I've been thinking about recently that I thought, um, again, it's it's not a legitimate thing. <laughs> Most of the things that I talk about on this podcast are not a legitimate thing. They're just my kind of view on things and like frameworks that help me um, conceptualize things. And um, this framework has kind of helped me a bit recently, or at least I've started to think of it. Let's not say helped. I haven't used it, yet, but I've started to think of it recently. And um, I'm very interested in eating disorders um, and disordered eating. And um, I, I was kind of drawing some parallels, I guess, recently. It just resonated with me a bit that um, the, the sort of self-love um, behavior that I have is very similar to kind of an eating disorder binge purge um, on on <laughs> the way that I treat myself. And I'll, and I'll try to explain this. So I'm going to go into a bit of a kind of scientific backstory here. So it's just going to be a a kind of flow of conscious. These are not scripted. Um, so it's kind of going to be a bit of a like flow on what I think about these things and just let my mind wander. So I do apologize if it's going to be a bit chaotic and random, but basically um, in eating disorders, what we see is that, um, especially when I'm talking about things like bulimia here, for example, or disordered eating of that sort of nature, um, there tends to be a kind of breaking of habits um, in terms of or creation of um, unhealthy habits around eating patterns, wherein there tends to be a kind of a break in the connection between our need for food um, and our positive reactions to having food when we want it. Um, and then we kind of kind of break that interruption so we have a need and we don't satisfy it sufficiently or we over satisfy it and then we kind of break that link between the brain and our body in terms of what food we do just a very very simplified version of this i think huberman labs just explains it in a lot more depth and i don't want to go into the science of that um i actually have a newsletter on this if you want to read about it um because it's it's just very very fascinating but basically there's this sort of behavior where um binge purging is where when you binge you have uh excessive amount of something which is out of proportion to average needs and then a purge is trying to get rid of that um and i think i have this sort of behavior when it comes to self-love what i mean with this is for example um either because i oversubscribe to things or either because i take on a bit too much i very often get into a situation where um i need to be very lean in the sense of there's no fun um there's no time off there's just too much grind to be able to maintain um, requirements for things that I've subscribed myself to. And then it might be 4am or it might be 3am and what I'm doing is I'm browsing Twitter or I'm just browsing Instagram stories and going through reels randomly. And this sort of situation to me feels like a bit of a binge on self-love where I'm just so mentally drained I'm just so exhausted. I've been denying my needs all day for um, for time off, for mindless activity. I've been denying my needs for friendship. I've been denying my needs for um, reflection and connection. And I've just been filling that in with work, 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 similar to, you know, denying yourself the need for food in general. Um, and then you get to a case where you just break and you have a binge session. And the binge session for me can be completely out of proportion um, behavior. So do I genuinely have a need to be on my Instagram at 4am? No, probably not. Do I genuinely have a need to be on YouTube browsing random visit <laughs> videos about like 90 day fiance commentaries um, at 5 a.m. on a random day when I have work the next morning? Definitely not. I don't. But I'm kind of 
plugging this need for shutting off my brain. I'm plugging this need for, um, for just, I want to call it relaxation, but just anything that isn't work while I am conscious, um, with this kind of binging behavior. And the problem with binging is that it does tend to lead, at least in my case, for a need for a purge, which is cleanse myself of this awful thing I did. Um, And it goes from spending all night to actually waking up very early the next morning again and working way too much. Then I stop responding to my friend's text messages sometimes because I go, no, I've been wasting way too much time last night on random things. I don't have time to socialize. I need to do more work. I don't do this as much anymore, actually. This is old Elizabeth behavior, but I've been thinking about it because to some extent, I think I still um, have like lesser traits of this. Um, So because I've been so much on time off, because I've procrastinated so much, for example, on an important task that I need to do, um, again, binging on self-love by doing something completely random or unimportant or unrelated to what I'm doing, I then need to purge, which is overcompensation for work, which is overworking, 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 again, ignoring my needs in the meantime for any sort of reasonable relaxation, any sort of reasonable fun, any sort of reasonable time off, just completely ignoring all the these signals from my body and going into work, 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 work mode, which eventually leads to another break or breakdown, call it what you will, um, of procrastination or complete time off again to an unreasonable amount, which then leads to a new cycle again and again. So I'm constantly caught in the situation where I can't keep up with the work that I do unless I, th- I think that I cannot keep up with the work that I do unless I am um, kind of purging. So I'm doing, having no fun. Um, and then I can only, then I just break and then I have unreasonable amounts of fun or self-love in moments of just taking complete days or weeks off, um, completely quitting university degrees or things of that, or jobs or things of that sort, um, of completely kind of leaving, um, countries, changing countries, leaving somewhere else, um, kind of removing yourself from situations or from people, um, spending way too much time doing fun things, um, staying up all night, just randomly browsing things, and then leading to a situation of, oh no, I need to catch up again and again. So it becomes this cycle, this cycle, this cycle. And I think at the core of the cycle, just with disordered eating, is denial of shutting down signals. Like when you shut down signals of hunger from your body by overriding them and going, no, you don't need food right now, you don't need to eat. Um, that will eventually, of course, lead to disordered eating because your body will go, well, it can't trust itself, but it does have needs. And those needs will kind of get amplified um, and express themselves in periods of needing excessive amounts of food in a sitting if you are shutting these off again and again and again and again consistently. And the same way, I think I do this with work and I don't even realise where I do have needs, unfortunately, apparently, um, to relax. And I do have needs to take time off and I do have needs to enjoy myself with people. Um, And by constantly shutting off these signals for wanting to do all these things, it leads to a case of just like breaking down and wanting then Um, being unable to maintain or keep up the sort of standards for work that I had set beforehand and therefore leading to binge purging activity. And I guess the solution for both is as with an eating disorder where the solution is, you know, listen to your body, force your body to eat regularly, and then you can kind of have balanced, you can find balance again. Um, And where if if you eat regularly, and you satisfy your hunger needs when they are there, it won't lead to the case of these ravaging hunger that leads to um, binging behaviour. Um, and in the same way, when it comes to self-care and when it comes to work and when it comes to procrastination, if I don't override my need for a break, if I stop overriding um, my needs for socialization. if I stop overriding all these needs for not working by going, no, no, you can do this, you can work, you can work, you can sit down, just just go through it, then it won't lead to the case of going, no, I actually, I can't do this at all. Um, but I think as simple as this sounds, the issue there is that um, as with disordered eating, there's a loss of trust in one's instinct. And I think this is a core issue. Um, if I think the first reaction to, you know, having an eating disorder and being told, no, 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 trust, trust your body, just, just eat when you're hungry. I think 
someone's reaction would be, no, I, I can't trust my body because then I'm going to gain weight. I can't trust my body. I'm, I'm not to be trusted. I want to eat more than is necessary. Um, my body wants more than is necessary. I know what is right. I can't trust my instincts. And I think in the same way, um, if someone told you, oh, you know, you don't need advice like you don't need a schedule you don't need a calendar just you know work intuitively <laughs> um work when it feels that it's right and you stop when it feels that it's wrong and then you go no but I'm a lazy person um and then you go but no but I- I'm not to be trusted with that because then I'm just gonna have fun um I can't be trusted to um to do things when when I feel like it because then you know it, things will go horribly then I'll, I'll never get any work done and then I'm gonna get fired from, from my job and but let's I think it's worth kind of pressing on that um, because it, it tends to be these, this vague impression that we have in our mind of like, we don't actually think of it consciously, but we work under the assumption. No one actually thinks, oh, if I don't have a calendar, if I don't have, no one takes the time to do that. We just assume that we're always going to force ourselves to do things. So no one actually, or at least in my case, I never actually consciously think that I need a calendar for X, Y, Z reasons. No, I just work with a calendar and I work with these schedules and I work to override the kind of things that I do because I word, work apparently under this assumption that without these things, I would be unable to function. And that's the underlying assumption. So then I go and analyze that. And I delve a bit deeper. And I go, well, is that true? <laughs> is that true, Elizabeth? Is it actually true that if I didn't have a calendar, I would never get any work done? Is it actually true that if I didn't have a, um, kind of if I didn't force myself to work when I don't feel like it, I will never feel like working? Is it true that unless I force myself to work, I will get things done? Is it true that I have no desire that is innate of my own to get um, work done? Is it true if I worked 20%, 50% less that I would get fired and um, I would get kicked out of uni? Is that true? Or is it more likely that things would be okay? <laughs> maybe not at the level that they are, maybe not at the level of excellence that I assume that I am working under. Um, but what would my, but to be honest, Sometimes I think that if I had a lot less anxiety around what I did, my performance would be a million times better. But uh, ignoring that, ignoring that, assuming that it got worse, let's say it got 10% worse, 20, 30, whatever, 50% worse. What would that look like? Would I be able to survive with that? Would I be, if I got my health back and my happiness back, would that be worth sacrificing this quality that I assume that I have because of all this sacrifice? And I think, you know, it, once I actually do these calculations and once I actually think of these things, it just feels so ridiculous, <laughs> the way that I work. Um, the way that I've been working and living for so long just feels absolutely ridiculous. And, I'm, and I, I have this, I had this sense of like, almost frustration going like, why did I question this earlier? Because if I, if I had actually taken the time to really consider these things, the answers would be blatantly obvious to me. The answers are obviously, well, no, I'm probably not going to get fired if I stop being so anxious. If I don't answer this email at 2am, I'm probably not going to get fired. But I always behave as though that is the case. And it's this huge mismatch between the assumptions. And I think this is the thing that I like, this is the theme of the season. This is the theme of my life right now is what the hell are the assumptions under which I am working? Because my conscious mind tends to have other conclusions, but the way that I live and the way that I behave is as though I am working like uh, functioning completely differently. I'm functioning under a completely different set of assumptions and rules that do not match those which I seem to or I think that I believe. So in the same way, I think as disordered eating, I am definitely rethinking the way that I approach um, that I approach work. And I am going and I'm, I'm already starting. I've, I've done this over the last almost a year now, actually. I haven't had a calendar. So I only have kind of Zoom links in my calendar um, and meetings booked in, but I don't book in events. And I don't schedule things in and I do a lot of like intuitive work, um, which to be fair, I will say, obviously my productivity, I think has gone down um, and I, I, I'm not as organized. And I tend to forget things a lot more than I did before um, when I used to like schedule in every 15 minutes. But equally, by not overriding my desire for rest, by not overriding, well, sometimes I still do it, I'm not going to lie, but by not constantly overriding my desire for fun and rest, I tend to feel so much more satisfied. I tend to have a lot less super late nights doing absolutely nothing with my brain buzzing with anxiety and random thoughts. And I tend to feel kind of more satisfied and balanced overall. And I think this was just a very, very big 
um, breakthrough for me. So I just wanted to ask you, if, especially if you are familiar with eating disorders, um, if you are familiar with binge purging behavior, um, it's going to be so much easier, I think, to kind of um, <laughs> have a thought on this and kind of think about this. If you're intimately familiar with um, overriding of kind of habits and needs with yourself. It's going to be very, very easy, I think, for this framework to make sense. And hopefully it does make sense. And um, I would love to know your thoughts on it because I think it's so easy then to recognize this in yourself and to go, Aha, I, I see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm, I'm overriding my needs. I am ignoring them. And this is not healthy in the long term. I can do it. Obviously, we sometimes we need to do this. Uh, sometimes temporarily, of course, um, we can't you know, do whatever we need, whenever we need it. Um, there are so many limit limitations in life and there's so many things that make this very difficult. That's absolutely fine. But in the long term, kind of working more intuitively, eating more intuitively, um, spending time with people more, intu more intuitively, responding to things, not because we've scheduled them in arbitrarily in our calendar, um, not when they don't feel right, not when we don't genuinely just just don't want to do things but rather doing them when we feel like it and I think we'll find and like I've genuinely found that I still <laughs> I still want to work um just on a different schedule and I still want to rest well I do want to rest a lot more but it's less binge purgy it's less all or nothing and it's much more balanced and it's much more um kind of organized and <laughs> well organized in a positive way and not organized in the way that it used to be in the past and um I think it's just much more healthy in general and I've come to kind of trust myself and my body a lot more and yes and it kind of you know it leaves me in this weird position with productivity in general doesn't it because productivity is important and I get asked a lot about you know productivity advice and even today when I decided to share my stories on my day got so many messages from people going are you okay are you in a manic spur you're doing so much um and it, it genuinely is because I want to um but I feel so much of productivity advice is around you know how do you trick yourself to do how do you trick your brain into thinking how do you trick your brain and why should we trick our brains why should we do that why should we just not like trust our brains and we can't we can't trick them long term just like eating you can't trick your brain long term there are essential needs that we need to satisfy otherwise they come back in like terrible and awful ways it's the same brain that you've been tricking all day that keeps you awake until 2 a.m on instagram it is that same brain it's that need that you cannot get away from um it's that need for relaxation and it's that need for connection and it's that need for not working while conscious that we're just completely ignoring and shutting down that leads to this sort of behavior so yeah so i'd say the next time that you feel that you are irrationally binging on I called it self-love definitely the wrong word but I'm going to stick with it to the end um, because I started it while acknowledging that's probably not the right word to use but if you're if you find yourself binging on rest if you find yourself binging on um self-love or things that you enjoy doing if you find yourself really binging irrational amounts at the wrong times at those things and then critically feeling guilty after you are done if you find yourself feeling because I feel guilty when I'm up until 2 a.m browsing Instagram I'm not gonna lie I definitely feel very guilty so if you're doing something to an extent that you feel out of control that you feel is disproportionate it's too long or it's too late or it's too invaluable or it's at the wrong time and after you're finished with this you feel guilty that feels like a definition of a binge to me and if you then feel that, no, you need to compensate by this for waking early up earlier tomorrow, um, you need to cancel your movie date or you need to cancel your hangout with your friends because you need to make up for being unproductive. That's binge purging behavior. <laughs> and You're doing it with your life and you're doing it with your productivity. And I would say it's not good. It's not healthy. It's quite toxic. And there should be healthier ways around it. And potentially, you know, just adapting this from eating, the way around it is to get back in touch with what the hell your body wants and what the hell your body needs and get used to listening to those signals that you've been shutting down because of all the YouTube videos and all the kind of tweets and all the advice that you've read on how to shut down and how to not listen to your body and how to not do things the way that when you need them and when you want them and to do things when you think is the right time, irrespective of how you feel and irrespective of what the hell else is going on in your life. So if you felt like that, if you've behaved like that, um, yeah, let's it's probably not sustainable 
a lot happier i feel a lot happier this way and i wonder if um, if anyone's unintentionally also tried this um because it was unintentional for me to start with if anyone's unintentionally also tried this and also found out that it was quite helpful but yeah um that is that and thank you so much if you made it so far i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think thanks bye